You know, so often in our culture right now, I feel like we, uh, we are so independent. We've uh, gone to the point of isolation, haven't we? Even, there are those, even though there's social media to keep us connected every moment of every day, uh, even, even though we have that, what we don't really have, most of all, is real connection that we really need. Amen? So it's important to me to have people that support me on the spiritual journey. I know it must be to you. That's why you're here in spiritual community. I've talked to people recently, and you know, we all take our vacations. I, I, I've taken a couple this summer, and I've got one more coming up. And I love, I love to get away and have time with my family, but I also love being back here amongst you to get the love and support for my next phase of my own evolution. Amen? It's so good. It's so good to get loved up and supported so we can go back out there and do what's ours to do, right? Right. Well, we really are here to be uh, angels in my belief, and it just so happens the author of this book believes that too. We're in the book, The Fifth Agreement. This is our last week, our ninth and final week. Uh, this book, mine, is uh, so marked up and dog-eared, it's ridiculous because each chapter I've read many times. Some people have joined me in reading it and have gotten a lot out of it. Um, and today is real important because uh, it says to me that my, my, my whole mission, my whole personal desire, my whole direction of ministry is on point because at the very, very end of all this great teaching, he says, Help me change the world. In other words, we can't, none of us can do it by ourselves, right? We have to help and support one another in changing the world, right? So who are you really? What kind of messenger are you? Are you an angel? Are you a heavenly messenger? What is the message you are bringing to the world? What is your message? What is the message you are bringing day in, day out to your own self, to your own life, to those you love? How about to those you don't love? What kind of messenger are you? This is a very, very important question. What kind of messenger am I? Because as we start asking that question, we might find answers to it that we don't really like. We might find ways that we're being a messenger that we don't want to be. Well, the good news is, once you know that, you can change it. Amen? As long as you're in denial pretending you're not that kind of messenger, you're not going to change, your life is going to stay the same, and you're going to be living in a language of what? Oh, uh, sorry, let me back up. I forgot, y'all weren't here last service. Okay, see, I, evidently I just continued from last service. I forgot. I forgot. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm going to start in a completely different place because here's the point. You are here as a human being Somebody gave you a legacy. Maybe it was your parents, maybe it was your grandparents, all of the above, really, right? Also, this is true of you spiritually. There's a legacy that you bring with you that's been given to you. Now, you get to choose, am I going to live out the legacy I was given or am I going to create a new legacy? In other words, most of us grew up, and if you've been following this series, you know what I mean. Now, we all had wonderful things, I'm sure, about our childhoods, and we all had things that stank about our childhoods fine. But what we all took on, what we all took on, listen to what I'm saying, what we all took on is lies, shame, guilt, addiction. That's what our culture is right now. Take a look, right? That's why our jails are absolutely full because we grew up in lies. And the lies get so painful, we will do anything to escape the lie. Steal, beg, borrow, we will do anything to escape the lie that we're in at the moment. By the way, in the, in the movie Matrix, it calls it the Matrix, right? Right? Remember that movie, The Matrix? It's awesome. I mean, there's so much metaphysical in there. It's so good. All right. So in other words, we will do anything to get out of the light. Anything. Please, numb me out in some way. Give me some addiction, whatever. Gambling, drugs, it doesn't matter. Help save me from this lie that I have inherited that I am starting to perpetuate. Right? So we're, so at some point we say, you know what? No. No, you know what? I know that's the legacy I've been getting. I want to leave a different legacy, right? I want to live from a different place, and then we kind of wander into a unity church somewhere, and we say, I don't know how I got here. Maybe we say, my, my brother brought me, my sister brought me, my sponsor brought me. That's a very common one, right? My sponsor said, not only do I need to get sober, I need to spiritually support myself, Right? I need to get a spiritual recovery, right? I need to quit thinking I'm bad all the time and actually think I'm good and see if that changes things. Can you imagine? If you only think you're bad all the time, you're going to live up to what you think about yourself, don't you think? 
If somebody is constantly telling you how wrong you are and how bad you are and every desire you have is, is wrong and everything you do is wrong, and by the way, you were born sinful in the first place, how in, in the world can you feel good about yourself and do things good? Some of us make it out barely, hanging on by our fingernails. We make it out and we say, you know what? There is another way to be. I don't have to live out of the shame, the pain, the guilt, the abuse, the addiction of my childhood. I can live a whole nother way. There's a whole nother way of being. Amen? Amen. Right? So I want to live from another place instead of all that. Right? So there's three main ways that we do live from. Right? Three main ways. Three languages, as we like to say from the book. Three languages. There's the language of gossip, which lives over here. There's the language of the warriors, which lives over here. And then there's the language of truth. Pretty much culturally, we're almost all over here. Almost all over here. The language of gossip. Let's talk about what that is. It take a while, guess. Does, has everybody in here, in some form or another, been a victim of or participated in gossip in any way, shape, or form? Just, I'm just curious. Okay. So pretty much that's everybody. So would you say that predominantly that's how we experienced our culture. In fact, in fact, gossip is now the news. Did you know it? I know more about Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie than I do my own family members because it's on the cover of every... Po is nobody tired of that but me? I mean, how many times are we going to hear about Tom Cruise's divorce? My gosh. I mean, I don't know, right? How many times are we going to hear about that? Gossip sells things. Why? Because if we have our mind on somebody else, we don't have to look at ourselves. It's so much easier to look at what's wrong with everybody else and to perpetuate the lie of what we think is wrong about everybody else. And guess what? Even if it's true, it's none of your business. Right? None of your business. Okay. So this, this language over here, this life over here that we call a life, which is not a life, this is hell. Trust me, this is hell that you make for yourself and you swim around in it and you love it. And you love to pull people into hell because it, as you do, you feel stronger and stronger and better and better about yourself because the truth is you don't feel good about yourself in the first place, which is why you live there, right? You just want more people to join you there. But when this, these other worlds are waiting over here and they're going, come on. You can come over here too. The language of the warrior says, the person in the language of gossip says, you know what? I am tired of this negative energy and there's got to be another way. I'm going to put down the smokes. I'm going to put down the drugs. I'm going to put down the whatever. And I'm going to say, is there possibly something else? Because what I've tried so far isn't working. So I'm going to try to move over into this level right here, which means I'm going to start to fight my own thoughts, not fight as in I'm going to beat up on myself. That's what this is. When you move into a warrior stage, what you say is, I'm going to start hearing things as they really are, not the story I make up about them. If somebody is bringing gossip to me, what I do is I say, you know what? Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, I got something else I got to do right now. It's over. Or we go around the person talking to us and say, hey, you know what, um, I just want to check something out with you, I heard. I just, is this true? Is this what's going on? And you know, every group of people does it. I love it. Even ministers do it. And you know what we do as ministers? We get together and we talk about how bad the parent organization is. That's what we do. We don't talk about other ministers. We talk about the parent organization. We feel good about that because, you know, we put them there in the first place. Right? And then we feel good about that. I did it myself, and then I said, you know what? Oh, my gosh. I was at my last conference. I said, I am, I, okay, I see problems, and I have two choices. I can either fully move into here, totally and completely. You know where here is. Gossip. I can tell everybody how bad it is. I can tell everybody what's wrong with it. Or I could actually move all the way over here into truth and say, you know what? As I said to the board, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to try to move into unity leadership in a greater way because I see a need. And the board here said, wonderful, go ahead and do that. I said, oh, no, now I have to. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Do you see how the personal responsibility changed everything? I'm not talking about it anymore because I'm living in truth about it. But I had to be here first, see? I had to say, well, what is it over here? What is it over here? Boy, the energy's sure better over here. 
It's so much lighter over here. Man, this energy feels good because now I'm just moving forward to do what's mine to do rather than making everybody else wrong. Guess what? If you see a problem, maybe it's because you're needed in the equation. Right, so that's when we're working in the language of the warriors, we find out what's ours and what isn't. We start seeing things as they really are. We start to choose heaven rather than be sucked into hell. Right, I choose heaven now. Will you say that with me? I choose heaven now. In other words, I choose good, I choose joy, I choose fun, I choose to live life, right? So I'm going to create a personal heaven for myself instead of personal hell. Many of us, by the way, have to hit bottom before we make this choice. Some of us never make it. Some of us never, ever make it. I remember sitting in recovery rooms many years ago, and I had this friend, and my gosh, we were such good friends. She had supported me so much in my Al-Anon recovery from my codependence. I loved her, and I... My sponsor was in this group. We had such a wonderful time together. And she was in several programs. You know, she was in Al-Anon. She was in uh, AA. She was in NA. I think there was one more too. And she, she was just trying to better herself so much. And I was so lifted up by her. And then one day she didn't show up in a meeting. And I said, where did she go? I call, no answer. And I said to my sponsor, where is she? And she said, you know, I was so naive. I didn't know. She said, some of us don't make it. Some of us don't make it, that's true. But some of us do. You choose. You can say what's happened to you as the reason you don't move forward. Well, guess what? That's over. And I know, yes, it's impacted us. I don't belittle or, or demean anybody's experience but when we let our experience of five six seven eight nine ten whatever that age still affect us 40s 50s 60s 70s it's time to move on it might mean getting help it might mean getting therapy it might mean getting a prayer partner it might mean a getting medication it might mean going to recovery meetings it might mean putting down the remote putting down the facebook putting down the thing it might mean you've got to get a life and discover who you are in the first place right it might mean you've got to make some changes it will but I'm saying the old life, that's, that's oh, you hear how it's over here? You see, I always keep coming back to this. This is what we're moving out of. The land of the warriors, by and large, is where I see most of us in this room. Right? We're in the land of the warriors. We, we've experienced hell, don't want to go back there, and we've glimpsed heaven. And know it's better over here, but still don't quite trust that it's possible. Heaven is possible now. Will you say that with me? Heaven is possible now. Now, if you're not sure about heaven and hell, if you still believe there are places you go after you die, remember, if you're religious, you're scared of going to hell. If you're spiritual, you've been there, you do not want to go back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right, so we want to live our dream of heaven today. That's what I want to do. I want to live my dream of heaven today. I don't want to wait. I don't have to wait till I die. I can do it right here, right now, in every aspect of my life. I am living heaven today. Say that with me together. I am living heaven today. In other words, I'm not letting the old ideas, the old thoughts, the old beliefs, the legacy that I was left of the past is not running my life anymore. I'm running it. Me and God are running my life. I know, it's probably bad grammar. Me and God are running my life right here, right now. Heaven is available today. Together? Heaven is available today. Right, so I'm going to decide today, right here, right now, what kind of messenger do I want to be? And I'm telling you, if you're living over here, the message is so about you. No matter who you think you're talking about and how right you are, it's your message. It's all about you. Everything you see that's wrong with everybody else and every single thing that you say is yours. It's a life seen through your filters. And as soon as you get here to the land of the warriors, you start to see what's real. And you cannot believe how simple things are and how you've made them so complicated because somebody pushed your buttons. Right? You say, I don't have any buttons anymore. The bu I, no buttons. No, I'm not a machine. I don't have buttons. Right? Nobody's... Okay. We'll go to this one. We'll go... <laughs> oh, yes. You get your spiritual lessons at home alone. I get them... 
All right. So we want to move from the, from the uh, language of the warriors to the language of truth. The language of truth. This is where nothing is a lie. This is where truth lives. This is where God lives, right? This is where, this is where um, joy lives. Yeah, joy is possible. I don't care who you are, what you've done in the past, joy is possible for you. It's so possible. Even what you think about me, joy is possible. What you think I did or didn't do right now or in the past, joy is possible. You know, being right is really overrated. Remember that at the beginning, we need each other to fly, you know. Remember that idea? It's such a, it's not really even very lofty. It's very human. It's very human. The truth is, you know how to be spiritual. You've always known it. You're learning to be good humans, to support one another, you know, as we need it. To say, hey, you know, good job. You know, when you did that thing, I liked it. So when we live from here, when we live from truth, all we have for others is love, empowerment, and support. That's it. It gets so simple, so quick. What you think about what they're doing is not even in your mind because what you think isn't any of their business. Your thinking is does nothing but hurt you. It doesn't hurt anybody else as you try to tell everybody. No, I'm saying when you're living over here, the last thing you're thinking is what somebody else need to be, needs to be doing. You're thinking, wow, look at that. I wonder how I can support that. And when you see a movement over here, you say, hey, you want to go to church with me? Hey, just let's hang out, you know, let's go do that bowling thing with the fitness team or let's, you know, let's go to a class. Hey, you want to catch a movie? Let's just go to Starbucks and be aggressive business people on our computers. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist them. Oh, did I just move over here? I did, didn't I? Okay. Oh, I want to go back. I want to go back. How do I get back over there? How could I? Okay, first is uh, I'm going to ask Starbucks to forgive me and the CEO, Howard Schultz, who, by the way, plays a mean game of basketball, right? So um, what I meant to say is let's have a do-over. What I meant to say is you could invite somebody out for coffee and just hang with them. Just, like, be with them. Don't need anything from them, right? Don't pressure them to come to church with you even. Just be with them. Just hang out. Bring a friend here during the week and walk them through our garden. Say, hey, I just want you to see this place I go all the time. It's a, yeah, it's a church, but it's not like most churches you know. Minister wears cowboy boots. You know, it's different. (laughs) Right, so how can we live in truth? How can we live in truth? How can we live here? This is so alluring, right? Because this is funny and it's cute, right? I just did it. I mean, it's so great. I just did it right in front of you. But then I said, oh, gosh, yeah, I did it. That's when I move here, right? That's when I move here. I said, oh, you know. Let's have a do-over. I forgive myself, ask for God's forgiveness that I always have, and I say, oh, here's what I really want to do. Here, yeah. That feels a lot better. Once you start working within these three languages uh, consciously, what happens is that the energy comes in and you say, oh, that doesn't feel good. Did you see it hit me? Ah. And then you decide you don't want that anymore. You decide there's more for me because you are really a heavenly messenger. We call it in unity the Christ within, right? The Christ within you. Christ in you, your hope of glory, the Apostle Paul tells us. So I'm going to lift up something John told me a long time ago. You say it all the time, so I know you don't mind me saying it. He says, we're going to, and he learned it in Campus Crusade for Christ, right? We're going to change the world 
one soul at a time. Me first. Me first. So the last chapter, actually the epilogue in the book is, help me change the world, right? Help me change the world. So, and it's like, yes, we have to do ourselves first because what do we want in the world? Tell me, what do we want the world to be? Somebody tell me. Peace, absolutely. What else? Love, what else? Joy, what else? Kindness, what else? Acceptance, yes. What a Healing. Gratitude. Heaven, yeah. Right, so all these things we want, it's really, really possible to get it. I really honestly believe it's possible. I have to. I must believe it's possible. If I invest too much in the news, it'd be easy to forget that, right? Although I'm one of those people. I don't believe you shouldn't watch the news. I think, you know, it's good to know what's going on in the world to give it spiritual context so we can help raise the vibration of what's happening, right? Right, so it's possible. But to change what's out here, we have to change here first. This out here is just a reflection of here. That's all. Right? Everything that we say we want in the world is what we want in us. But we have to get it first in us. And not just first. I think we've got to do them both. Right? It's both and, I think, for me. Because when I get a little more knowledge and a little more awareness, well, then I move forward and work with what I've got. And then I get a little more knowledge, a little more awareness, well, then I work, move forward with what I've got. If I just sit and wait for, to me, for me to be perfect to do anything, guess what? I'm never going to do anything, right? It's not going to happen. And, I, and I, I tell you, I have, you know, I, I've been this person and I know people, they just want to just sit and meditate and be all spiritual alone in their apartment. And then go out and just do the world. You know, the, the apartment smells like solid incense. You go in there, my God, what's been, whew, what's been happening in here? Oh, yeah, I meditate. Really? Wonderful. What, what else have you been doing? Oh, you know, I just, I just do my readings, you know, and ring my bells and, uh, you know, I get cool tattoos with, you know, spiritual words on them and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, I show them to people. Yeah. Yeah. I do all that. Yeah. And, and what have you done with this new spiritual tattoo? Oh, well, I mean, I look at it. Yeah. How are you moving forward with it? How are you taking, you know, and by the way, I love spiritual tattoos. Amen. I love them because I know there's people in our congregation. They were all showing it to me last service. I said, I know we have them, right, to remind us of who we are, right? We say, oh, yeah, the ohm symbol. I remember what that means. It brings us back to center. A lot of people in this community have awesome spiritual tattoos. But I'm saying it's not about the tattoo. It's about the, do, the living the tattoo, right? I mean, my gosh, with prayer beads now, we use them as a fashion accessory, not for prayer beads. It's like, do I have blue that goes with this outfit? I'm saying, are you living the prayer? Right? The Quakers say, put feet on your prayers, right? Put feet on your prayers. In other words, whatever spiritual knowledge you have, move forward with that. To do what you can do. To do what is yours to do. As Charles Fillmore said, to do the thing that ought to be done by you. Right? What ought to be done by you. That's how you change the world. With however much awareness, however much understanding you have, to then move forward and help the world that way, and then get more, and then you move. And then get more, and then you move. Always moving forward, always moving out. That's what changes the world. One changes the world. One soul at a time, starting with me. Right? What if you could be the own, your own hero, having, have, having to look up to superheroes and all that, which are cool and wonderful, but what if the hero were in you, right? It just got to be in you. Everything that you desire is in you. Everything. You are a heavenly messenger right here, right now, called to bring a message to the world. Help me change the world. We're already changing Orlando. We're doing it. Already. We have people already watching this message right now all the way, all over the world. Australia, China. You can't believe the places people are watching our message from. You can't believe it. N name another place, Michael, people watching the message. Several places in China, Greece. Hey, even in New Jersey, you know? <laughs> I said that for my sister. I love you. Okay. Okay. She watches every Tuesday at work. Okay. 
last week two maintenance guys joined her too because they thought they heard the voice you know on the machine and they said is that you talking and she said no it's my sister I said, well, what's she doing She's like, come over here my sister's got this little ministry at her job i swear she passes out like louise hay cards and daily words to people <laughs> she's like an undercover agent for god or something and it's very cool <laughs> 